Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a shooting animation and a bullet which is fired from the end of the gun. If you haven't already seen some of my other tutorials on how to make a 2D platformer game, feel free to look at my playlist. And remember, if you like what you see, please remember to hit like and subscribe. So let's begin by choosing our player. And in the animated sprite, we'll add a new animation for shooting. So create a new animation and in your warped assets, let's bring over the player run and shoot animation. So we have a sprite sheet inside the warped files collection. So we'll bring that over and let's just drop that into your game. And then let's name the animation run and shoot. And let's open up the frames, go into the player. And then for player run, shoot, open that. And then for vertical, set that to one and then select all of your frames. And add that. Let's increase the frames per second to 12. That should match the run animation. And let's just play that. Okay, that looks good. And to create the bullet, let's create a new scene, 2D scene. And then just change this type to be an animated sprite. And we'll rename this to bullet. And then back in the warped assets collection, under sprite sheets, we'll have a shot PNG here. So let's drag that over into our game. In the bullet, let's then create a sprite frames. And then we will create a new animation called shot. Open up the sprite frames and then we have two sprites, sorry, one sprite with two frames. Let's open that. And as you can see, it's very small. So we'll set vertical to one. And because we've just got two frames, we'll set that to two. And then just click the first frame and the second frame. Let's add that. So we have that in our frames collection. Let's just zoom in on our bullet. And let's just play that. Okay, let's just increase that a little bit more. So we'll leave that at about 10 and then save your scene. Now let's head back over to the player, access the player script, and at the top of the script in the enum, we want to add another variable called shoot. And then underneath the player jump method, let's create a new function called player shooting so function player shooting and then pass in delta and then what we want to do is to get the current direction of the player so in the player run method we've got that line already so we'll copy and paste that and then we need to check the direction and then get another input from the keyboard for actually firing the gun so let's head over to our project settings and let's create a new input for that so we'll call this action shoot Let's add that and then add the key and we'll use L on the keyboard. So now let's check the direction. So if direction is not equal to zero and then let's get that input from our keyboard. And then let's then assign the state. So current state equals state dot shoot. And then let's add this function to our physics process. So at the top, add that in. And then in the animation, we want to copy and paste these last two lines. And we want to check if our current state is shoot. Then let's play a different animation. So we'll play run shoot. Now let's run the game. And if we run and then press L, we can see that the shooting animation, if we look carefully, it is trying to play. And if you look in the debug statements, in the output window you can see that shoot is being called but then run is being called straight afterwards so what we need to do is to make a modification to our animation function let's just close that and in the player animations function what we want to do we want to get the current animation the animation and then we want to say if it's not equal to run shoot then allow you to run the animation for run 
but if we are in running shoot and we are playing the animation then don't instantly play the run animation so it gives chance for the run shoot animation to play and then when that finishes it will then come out so then let's play that and let's run press l and then when you run again it's running and then press l and you're ready to shoot now that we've got the run animation in place with shooting let's go back to our 2d view and then on animated sprite we've currently got this playing so let's run that and then what we want to do we want to attach a marker here and that will be the muzzle on our gun and then we can fire our bullets from there so let's just stop that animation let's go player add child node and choose marker rename this to muzzle and then let's move that now if we zoom in we want to just position this so it just sits at the end of the gun let's move it a little bit out so that the bullet can come in and then move away now head back to the player script to create the bullet what we need to do we need to first preload a scene we can do that by saying var bullet and then use the preload function to get hold of our bullet so we want the bullet scene and then preload that into this variable here the next thing we want to do is to get our muzzle and bring that as an onready variable then let's create this as a statically type variable because it's the marker we'll say marker 2d and that will enable us to get the position then let's do another variable to hold the position we'll say muzzle position we want to get that in the ready method so we'll say muzzle position equals the muzzle and then what position is it at so we are getting this position here back to the script then in the player shooting function we want to create a bullet instance using the bullet.instantiate method that will then create us an instance and then we want to get the position but we'll use global position and then we'll get the current muzzle and its global position too then what we want to do is in our tree or the scene tree we need to then assign that bullet instance to the scene tree so back over to the level or in the player what we want to do is to get the bullet instance of this parent and that will be in the tree so to do that say get parent and then add the child and then bullet instance so player is the node get the parent will be the tree above or the root node of the game and then what we want to do is add, add a bullet instance to that root node now run the game and in the scene tab we have a remote section if we just click that what we can see is all the nodes which are currently executing in the game in real time so we've currently got our player and our muzzle here when we run and then press l you can see a bullet has been created and it's been added to our scene here what we now need to do is make that bullet move and then shoot from the muzzle point so open up your bullet scene and let's create a new script and we'll just save that bullet script here and in the bullet script we'll use the physics function and what we'll do is we'll use the move local x method first and we need to use direction by speed by delta so we need to create two new variables so we'll use var speed we'll make that an integer and set this to around 600 and then we need the direction and this is the direction which the player is running in and that is also an integer what we also need to do is once we've instantiated the bullet we need to then remove the bullet later so that it doesn't hang around within our game so we can do that by adding a timer so add timer and then make this about five seconds we'll have one shot and we'll auto start the timer then click the timer again and go to node and then what we want to do we want to use this signal the timeout signal click connect and add that to our script and in our timer script we want to use the function q3 so when this method is called from the timer after five seconds q3 will delete the bullet so let's see the effect of the timer and q3 let's run the game and then let's go to remote 
and we can see the live nodes now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make the player run and then fire a bullet so that i've got quite i've got a number of bullets there so as you can see these items have now been added to the screen but after five seconds they start to delete and that is what timer and q3 is now doing so let's stop that as you can see though in the game the bullet isn't moving and the reason is is if we go back to the player script we need to assign those values so in bullet we need to assign the direction value go back to player script and then we'll get our bullet instance and then get the direction and then we'll assign direction that the player is in let's run the game again and then let's run and fire and as you can see the bullets are now firing from the player when we go to the right you can see that the bullet is coming out of the gun but at the left the bullet is firing from behind the player so let's fix that now if we look at our player in the scene the reason why the bullet is coming out of this position when the player runs right is because the muzzle is positioned here but when we are running left we need to flip and put the muzzle on the left hand side so let's head to the script and create a new function called player muzzle position and get the direction that the player is moving in and then we want to say if the direction is greater than zero let's get the muzzle position which we assigned in our ready variable and then if it is less than zero let's flip that Muzzle position is what we've declared in our x variable at the top. And we assign muzzle position to that at the start. And call the method from within the function. Go so back up to our physics function and then just before a player shooting, let's click the muzzle position first. And now let's run the game again. And as we run press the L key to fire we've got our bullets coming out of the left hand side and now the right hand side so the muzzle is flipping based on the player's direction now that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create bullets and fire them from your player in the next tutorial we will go through hit boxes and hurt boxes and then add an enemy to our level and then shoot them with the bullet if you like what you've seen in this tutorial today please remember to hit like and subscribe Thank you for watching.